one o'clock. So there may be some people that come in, but for now we're going to go ahead and get started and uh, video recording will be certainly usable for those people that come in late. So thanks to everybody for coming here uh, today and uh, uh, going over just some details. We did this last year with some other ministries, but we're going to do this with, and we're just doing it with lectures this year just so that we're all on the same page. And there's a couple of changes from what we were doing that, uh, that we're going to talk about today, but most of it's the same. Most of it's what you're familiar with. So many of you are probably going to just be like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. Oh yeah, I've heard this before. We're going to start by moving into the sacristy. Yeah. So two things you're looking for. You're looking for the ministry scheduler list here. I update this about fr the Friday before the weekend hits. And you're looking to just make sure, double check to see who's scheduled for lectures that day. Um, sometimes if somebody comes in as a second if there was only one or sometimes there's two and then all of a sudden somebody subs at the last minute so you just want to kind of pay attention to that. The other thing that you're looking for is, uh, if say that the, this stuff is not already out on the AMBO, you're looking for the, the colored binder, the lectionary, and the book of the Gospels. It's usually all stacked on top of one another. So, uh, yeah, you all see that over here. Yeah, sometimes these books are in here, and the sure. binder is in here, and that's where it would be. So we'll talk about that when we get back out there. Do we have any questions about where the sacristy is located and things of that nature? Let's go ahead and make our way back out to the church. Okay, so for the rest of the day, we'll be here, seated, seated here, and I'm just going to run through the packet uh, and go through a lot of these details. The top of the first page is really just a general outline of what uh, the, the responsibilities are. So if we can go ahead and skip ahead to the before mass section, that would be great. Uh, who who, uh, who has, doesn't have a packet? Does anybody need a packet, extra packet? So before mass, you want to take note of when you're scheduled and with whom you are scheduled. That's why that minister scheduler list is important in there, but also we use Ministry Scheduler Pro, right? Uh, that that uh, electronic app that allows us to see the dates, uh, the lectors who are assigned for that day, and so you wanna double check probably about a day before the mass is on who you're scheduled with, what lector you are, and so on and so forth. You wanna then look up the readings for the mass that you are assigned to. So say that you're on Saturday, you're gonna be looking for the readings for the second Sunday of Lent, for example, for, to, for this weekend. Say that you were scheduled for the five o'clock today or tomorrow for any one of those Sunday masses. I like to use the website USCCB, the US Conference of Catholic Bishops. That's, they, they get that stuff right every time. Um, one thing you gotta double check, if you're a Saturday mass goer, you wanna make sure that you're on, you really double check for the second Sunday of Lent, and you gotta get to the Sunday dates. Sometimes they have the Saturday readings for daily masses, so just be aware of that. Then when you look up your readings for the assigned day, if, you're, if there are two lectors scheduled, lector one, is responsible for the first reading and say that you're at a mass like the eight o'clock mass that doesn't have any music you would also read the responsorial song. Lector two would be the second reading. If you're the only lector assigned you would do all the first and the second reading as well as the responsorial psalm if it's the eight o'clock mass or another mass without music. Once you figure out where those readings are you want to practice reading the scripture passages before coming to mass. You want to familiarize yourself with the text. You want to double check to see if there's anything that's a little bit interesting that you might want to ask a question about to the priest. Uh, you want to understand what the main content is, what's the point of the reading. You want to try to figure out what genre it is. And you want to then, that's the, that information helps you better proclaim the readings, right? So you want to kind of have a good understanding of what the reading is about so that when you're then reading it to people, you, you feel, you, look, you know, what you're talking about. Any questions about that stuff you're doing before the day of the Mass? Yeah, so in those instances, you can ask the question. I will say, just for, the, just for that direct thing, um, so there's the year A readings and then there's the year B readings is what that is. Year, it's year B unless you're at the 10 o'clock mass for that day. So that would be an instance where if you just send me an email or you send the priest an email what readings we're doing that weekend, we can answer that question for you and so on and so forth. But yeah, that's a good question because sometimes they have more than one option, right? So you want to make sure.
Yeah, I'll try to be on top of that and be a, be a good steward about reminding everybody, hey, so there's multiple reading choices for this weekend, here's, and so on and so forth. And I, I'll try to do that a few days before the, the weekend hits. Yeah, and that one, I, I was so on point this year with the Christmas one that I made sure, <laughs> hey, all the priests are choosing to read during the, the Mass during the night readings. I would do that kind of a thing. And, sent, and I sent that email out to all the lectors, so it didn't matter what Mass you were at, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I can be a better steward about that. <laughs> Any other questions? Moving forward, so on the day of the Mass that you're assigned for, you want to try to arrive at least 15 minutes before the Mass starts. There's, there's a number of reasons for this that we'll get into. You want to dress appropriately for the occasion. Um, there's a lot of eyeballs that are going to be on you, so you just want to mess, dress modestly and more formal, make it look like it's indicative of the ministry that you're, ministry that you're participating in, right? You don't want to wear uh, sweatpants or t-shirts or tank tops or, or flip-flops or sandals as, as best as you can. So nice, nice pants, it can be jeans, that's fine, polo shirts is fine, button-down shirts and things of that nature. but. Not your, not your comfort clothes that you're sitting on the couch with at home when you're watching TV when you're, and it's late at night, right? You want to check in with the priest in the sacristy when you come in here. Then, then you also, if there's a second lector, check in with that second lector or wait for that second lector in the sacristy. Uh, that way they know that you're here and that, and then everybody's squared away on, okay, we have the lectures for the mass and then you can proceed as normal for preparing the readings, the things that you're going to read next. Now, for each Sunday liturgy, there's the large red book here that's the lectionary. It looks like this, and it says lectionary on the side, so you can always tell. Generally speaking, this lectionary will be on the ambo that day, okay? Usually Monsignor's pretty good about getting this out of the sacristy and onto the ambo. So it could either be open or on top of the ambo. There's these storage slots underneath. So you want to double check that it's indeed at the AMBO. Now, say that this book is not at the AMBO. It could be in the sacristy. And we talked about where it was in the sacristy there, so just double check if it's in there. And if it is in there, just go ahead and move it out to the AMBO. If you can't find the lectionary here or in the sacristy, you'll want to talk to the priest about that, um, and, then we'll double, and then go from there, and there'll probably have to be a scavenger hunt. Of the, of the lectionary book. So, now, there's also bookmarks for, that, are, that are in these that are usually set to the right readings for the day. So this weekend is second Sunday of Lent. Right now these bookmarks are, I would flip the book open and it's second Sunday of Lent's readings. So that's generally, that's generally the readings, uh, that's generally gonna happen every, for every weekend for this big book. Now, if you're a daily mass person, the daily mass binder is also in the sacristy. It's just a smaller green binder. Um, sometimes it's out here on the ambo, same thing, but sometimes it's in there in the sacristy and you just have to double check with where that is. But it's a smaller binder, again, open to the dates, but you want to double check that the dates line up. If the bookmarks are not set correctly or the binder isn't open to the correct spot, you could probably change it, but also double check with the priest. Yeah, we're doing these readings today, right? If the readings are different from uh, what you prepared, right, that's, it's a great time to communicate with the priest if you're just unsure about the bookmarks being set correctly or you're on the right reading or what's the readings for today. Um, if, if it's anything else than you were prepared for to read. Flipping on to the next page. There should also be this colored binder out in the ambo as well. It's the color of the liturgical season. So for Lent, it's purple right now. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white, and so on and so forth. But there should be some colored binder out on the ambo. You want to double check that it's indeed there. And if it's not at the ambo, you follow the same protocol with the lectionary. You, you check back in the sacristy to see if it's in there. If you can't find it in either spot, then just check with the priest. And again, you're going on the scavenger hunt. The colored binder contains the lector greeting that we do to start the mass. There's petitions in the colored binder. And then if there's any announcements, there's a third sheet in the colored binder. And it has all those things in there. So you just want to double check that those things are indeed in there. One of the other things that you're also looking for at this time, you want to double check the pronunciation of the names of the deceased at the end of the petitions. Um, 
generally those are mass intentions that people pay money to, for our church for, and so it, it's just nice if you take a little extra time to figure out what the name is. If it's a name that's really difficult to get off the first glance, then I'll try to put a pronunciation guide in there. But when in doubt, double check with the priest if you're unsure about the pronunciation, and then if if we still pronounce it wrong, it's the priest's fault, or it's the or it's my fault. It's not your fault, right? You also um, want to double check to see if there are any announcements to read. You want to just kind of get that in your brain. If there isn't a sheet, assume there are no announcements, which everybody will rejoice at that usually, right? But just double check to make sure there are no announcements to read or that there are announcements which will come in later as we go through the rest of the duties for the lectors. Once you've double checked all of those things, it wouldn't be a bad idea to read through everything once more, one more time, even if you prepared the readings for that day. So you could read through the readings, and then of course the things that you're responsible for, for in the colored binder, okay? So if you're lector one, and there's two lectors, lector one takes care of the lector greeting. They take care of the first reading, and at masses with no music, they would take care of the first, uh, the responsorial psalm as well. Lector two takes care of the second reading and the petitions, and then if there's any announcements, they would, they would read those as well. If there's just one lector for that mass, you do all of those things. You read both the readings. If there's, uh, if there's announcements, you read those. You read the petitions, lector greeting, and then if you need to as well for the responsorial psalm. If there's a question about pronunciation, or say that I make a typo in here and it's pretty obvious and plain, um, or say that there's something written in the lectionary that you want to try to erase. We don't like to write, write in the lectionary uh, pretty much at all, so it'd be highly encouraged to not write anything in the lectionary, but say that there's something in there that's a little confusing uh, reading-wise, or especially this one, if I make an error on this that with like a date or something like that, double check with the priest and say, hey, I saw this, can I make an edit with like a pencil or a pen and get in there, get the announcements? and just change the date on this or change the words or fix the spelling of that. And the priest will, the priest will say, yeah, and then you can make whatever edits you need to to make things more correct. Okay, this, this most hap often happens with announcements and petitions. I make so, so many mistakes. Um, all right, once you have finished preparation, you'll then go back into the sacristy and this uh, ministers, Eucharistic ministers, electors, and uh, altar servers will pray with the priest before Mass. So you'll go back in the sacristy and, and do that. Then it depends on the, the, the situation. If there's two lectors, the first lector can go sit in these reserved pews right here up at the front, far left, far, far side over here. Um, and you have family members and friends that want to sit with you, they're most welcome to sit with you over here in the reserve pew. That's what they're for. The second lector, and we're going to bring this back, will pick up the book of the Gospels. That's either out in the ambo or somewhere out in the church area or in the sacristy, probably, on the amb probably in the storage slot in the ambo down here. But you'll want to get, grab the book of the Gospels, and then you're going to walk back with the priest and the altar service to the vestibule. Okay. That's, if now if there's only one lector that's assigned, don't worry about the book of the Gospels. We won't do anything with the book of the Gospels. This is only on, on weekend, well, it's only at Masses where you have two lectors that you'll carry the book of the Gospels in. The reserve pews are for your friends and family. We already talked about that. So that's all the stuff about before Mass. Do we have any questions about, about that big chunk of information there? No, just leave it alone. Just, just, just keep it stored in the AMBO. So these changes, and particularly with the Book of the Gospels, I would like to wait till next weekend, so that way those of you that are watching on video have a chance to see this, and then we're all on the same page starting with the Book of the Gospels. So wait until next weekend. So that'd be the weekend of March 2nd and 3rd. Okay. Any other questions? Not today. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, let's move on to the Mass. So now we're going to talk about various things that lectors will do at Mass. For those responsible for the lector greeting, 
what you're waiting for is the church bells to ring. That's usually a that's usually going to happen, especially at weekend masses. I know uh, daily masses. I'm not so sure, but you're waiting for the church bells to ring at your mass, and that's the signal that it's five o'clock for the five o'clock mass, or it's eight o'clock for the eight a.m. mass, or it's ten o'clock for the ten a.m. mass, and so on and so forth. When you hear the bells ring, you'll begin walking up to the ambo. Okay, and we're going to talk about this in detail. When you're walking up to the ambo and you step out to the pew, before mass, you can genuflect to the tabernacle or you can bow to the tabernacle, whatever you can do, and then you walk up to the ambo. Now, say that there's no bells. It's always a good idea to have a watch or a phone to double check the time, okay? And say that you're not hearing the bells and it's five o'clock for the five o'clock mass, just go up at five o'clock. The important thing is that you're not starting mass until the priest gives you an okay signal back there. So just walking up to the ambo, you're ready to go for whenever the priest says it's time and you wanna be ready to go by five o'clock. You wanna be ready to go by 10 o'clock or when the bells ring. Sometimes the bells might ring an hour, a minute or a, or a minute and a half before the mass starts. So you don't necessarily have to stand in front of the ambo like this, but you could stand here in that, in that general area, okay. You want to also have the binder open to, to the lectern reading as well. So it's usually the first page in this colored binder, so it should be just a simple open up the binder and you're ready to go. It can be on top of the lectionary. There's no problem with that too for anybody who's wondering about that. This colored binder can be on top of this lectionary. Then once the priest gives you an okay signal or nods or whatever signal he gives you, it's time to start. And then you read the lecture greeting as is, starting with good evening, good morning, and welcome to Christ the King. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent and so on and so forth. And you just read the bold words word for word. One note, uh, especially if with the lecture greeting, only at 8 a.m. do you say please stand. At all other masses that have music, don't worry about it because that's the responsibility of the musicians. I know there's a little bit of confusion. Say that you don't see a cantor or a mic over there at the cantor stand. You may think, well, there may be not anybody that says it. Don't worry about it. It's almost always that the mic is back there and the musicians are taking care of it. If somebody doesn't say anything about please stand, it's not your fault. It's mine or the musicians that don't take care of it, right? So if you're at a music mass, don't worry about telling people to stand, okay? It's only at the 8 a.m. Mass on the weekends. Once you're done, you just go back to your reserved pew. Now, because the Mass has, begin, has begun at this point, the focus has shifted from the tabernacle to the altar. So for the rest of this Mass, you're reverencing the altar, no longer the tabernacle. This is important because when you're walking to and from the ambo to your seat, you don't need to bow. Okay, so don't worry about bowing when you come back to your seat. Just go straight from the ambo back to the pew. And especially for the opening, you could probably just go back to your pew and then stand up because it's, it's time for the mass. You can also go back to the pew even while the cantor is reading or the musicians are, re are telling people about, hey, we're singing the opening song today. And uh, then please stand. Don't worry about that. You can go back to your pew. It's not going to be that distracting. Any questions about the lector greeting? Very good. Now, say that you're lector two and you're responsible for carrying the book of the Gospels. So you have it back there in the vestibule. The order of procession is altar servers, however many there are, then it's you with the book of the Gospels, the priests are following behind you. When you're carrying the book, and you have altar servers in front of you, you wanna give about five feet of space between the, la the last altar servers that are going in front of you, okay? And so about five feet, if you're, if you're walking down the center aisle, it's probably about one, two, or three pews, so just kind of estimating, so about this distance. When you're carrying it, you'll hold it like this. You don't wanna hold it like this, that's too strenuous, right, and it's, it's a little tacky. Certainly don't want to carry it like this, like it's an umbrella. You don't want to carry it like this because you can't see in front of you, right? So you, they're, they're, this is good. 
bend at the elbows and then lift from your shoulders. You have, you have a side line, it's good. You want to carry it like this so that people can see it well and that's, that's how they'll best see the Book of the Gospels like this. And then you walk and match the pace of the altar service in front of you. They're probably walking a little bit slower than you usually do, so just be prepared for that. And you're matching their pace. You're trying to keep the same five feet of distance that you started with the whole way down the center aisle. When you get to the steps, you do not bow. You'll see the servers in front of you probably bow. You do not bow. You keep going up. You walk behind the altar. And then you place it, place it down. Then you go ahead and take a bow to the center of the altar. And then you'll return to your reserve pew. Okay? Any questions about carrying the book of the Gospels right there? One thing to note, it's not too heavy, um, and this is only going to last, you carrying the book of the Gospels is only going to last about a minute or a minute and a half of time, but if you still don't feel comfortable carrying the book of the Gospels and you would like the other lector to do it, go ahead and talk to them about that before the Mass. And if neither of you feel comfortable about it, don't worry about the book of the Gospels then. Just tell the priest, hey, uh, neither of us feel comfortable carrying this up the altar that day. That's fine. So, all right, if there's no questions, let's move forward to the first reading. Your cue, at this point, Mass is going and there's a lot of things that happen where you're just a normal parishioner. So your cue, when it's time to become a lector again, is when the priest says a prayer after either what's the penitential rite, so that's Lord have mercy, or I confess, and things of that nature, or there's a singing of a Gloria, okay? He'll go, let us pray, and then he'll say a bunch of words, usually the missile's in front of his face with an altar server opening up the missile, and he prays with his hands, through Christ our Lord, everybody responds, amen, and then sits down. Okay, so that's, you're paying attention for that part of the Mass. When everybody sits down, you don't you go up and you go up straight to the ambo. We talked about this before. When you're coming out of the pew, no need to bow to the altar. The rule is you bow to the altar when you're passing across the center. Okay, so if the lectures were seated over here and you were getting up from here and these were the reserve pews and you would go up to the ambo, yes, you would bow. But because you're not passing across the center and you're over here in this corner, you just get out of your pew and you walk straight up. Most definitely, probably, this binder will be open on the top of the lectionary, so you'll close it and you'll store it. You'll double check that the book, the lectionary, is open to the first reading. Before you begin, try and wait a few seconds for the noise to die down. You may be pretty quick getting up to the, to the ambo, and there may be some noise, there may be some people still sitting down and moving around and moving books and things of that nature. Try to wait a few seconds until there's more silence and everybody's ready to either read the reading or with you or they're ready to listen to you. You don't want to wait too long, like don't wait 10 seconds or 15 seconds. One, two, three, okay, there's a baby crying, I'm going. A reading from the book of Genesis, right? That, that's fine. So like three seconds. Then when it's time to read, you read the reading and you read it word for word. It's, it's all of the weird words in bold, in black bold, in this lectionary in particular. If it was the weekend lectionary, it's all just in black print, if I remember correctly. So you read it and you read it straight down. You read it word for word. You try not to ad lib. We all make mistakes sometimes and things of that nature when we're reading, it happens to the best of us. So if you make a mistake, just power through, do the best that you can. Once you're done with the first reading, this at this point, we're at the next page here. Once you're finished with the first reading and you're done, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God, you go and, you go and make your way back to the reserve pew and you just immediately do that unless you're responsible for the responsorial psalm. So before we get into the responsorial psalm, is there any questions about the first reading in general? The timing of it and things. If you're the responsible for the responsorial psalm, 
you stay at the ambo, pause for about 10 seconds. It doesn't need to be any longer than 10 seconds. It could be seven seconds, especially if the priest is giving you the death stare, but right. Um, but try to pause for a few seconds. It allows the people that just heard what you said to contemplate the scripture a little bit more. So you want to invite people to do that a little bit more and pray with God about those scriptures that might be challenging to them, for example. After the pause, you begin reading the responsorial psalm. You're reading the response once by yourself. And so in this case, it's, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Then you read that response a second time. And when you read that the second time, you can either use one or two arms to do this, but bring everybody in to read that response with you. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Then you read the verse. Now, I double check the hymnals and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. At the 8 o'clock Mass on Sundays, they have the verses with you, so they will most probably read the verses along with you, which is fine because then you just read, read the, read the rest of the psalm, and there's no issues there. If it's a daily Mass, I double-check. I didn't see the psalm verses in there, so they won't do that. Okay, And then what happens is they don't, they don't read the verses with you, but they will read the response with you. They'll try to. And when you do that, you want to, again, bring the people back in. So if I'm at a daily Mass, and this is the psalm for that Mass, I would go, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Second time. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Then here's the verse. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. At a daily Mass. Okay, that, that would be more appropriate. You don't want to ad lib here either. Like you don't want to say, this is the response, I will walk before the Lord. Okay, just read it as is, people will figure that out. When you're bringing people in, you don't need to say, now everybody, this is enough, right? You're, just let the words be the scripture, use the hand gesture, okay? It's a similar thing, I, if you've ever seen a cancer, they don't start, the, the, they, don't, they don't say, everybody sing, before it's about time to sing, right? They just lift up their arms. It's the same kind of deal there, okay? The, this gesture will be fine. Once you're done with the psalm, you go back to your pew, unless you're responsible for the second reading, in which you do the same pauses before, and then we'll go over the second reading in a minute, but you're basically staying at the ambo if you're doing everything, right? So you'll stay up here. Are there any questions about the responsorial psalm? Good. Oops, flip the page here. All right, so now say that you're responsible for the second reading and say that there's a second lecture and you're not up here yet already. Your cue is after the responsorial psalm. Say that there's musicians, the song would end. Okay, so if the, once the song ends and there's silence again, it's your time to go up to the ambo. Say that it's a, it's, a, it's a silent mass and it's the lector. The lector will leave the ambo for you, okay? And there's two lectors, that's why I say that, right? So an eight o'clock mass would be most probably where that happens. When the lector is leaving the ambo, you're coming up to the ambo. When the song ends, you're coming up to the ambo. Okay, and in the same manner as before, you don't need to bow to the altar, you just go straight up, okay? You'll pull, you'll turn the page most probably to the, where the second reading is if it's not already there. And then, same thing as before, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You just start and you read it word for word. Once you finish the second reading, it depends on the situation. Say that there's the book of the Gospels on the altar. You want to close the lectionary and you want to put it in the storage slot beneath you. You're making space for when the priest brings over that book of the Gospels onto the ambo, and that should be the only thing on there for the Gospel reading. If there's no book of the Gospels, you don't have to move the lectionary at all. You leave it alone, okay? Especially because the Gospel is in here as well, so the priest needs to be able to read from something, okay? Or say that there's the, the, week, the weekday, lectionary, right? But it's the, same, it's the same protocol for that. Then once you've moved the book or haven't moved the book, it's time to go back to the ambo and you go back into your seat. Any questions about the second reading and what's happening there? All right, moving on. Say that you're reading the general intercessions, the petitions. 
your cue is the end of the creed. Now this is a little bit different from what we're, what we're probably used to. Um, right now what's been happening is that you usually wait for the creed to be over with, amen, right? We say amen, and then the priest says something to introduce the petitions, right? And you go up to the ambo. We're going to try something different, especially um, in particular when the creed is said at these weekend masses. When everybody's saying, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, go up to the ambo. There's some school of thought that says you don't want to distract from the creed, but there's also the school of thought that the idea is the petitions are supposed to be one continuous prayer. What happens if you don't go up to the ambo during the creed is that then that prayer gets interrupted. So that's that, hence what we're doing there. So you go up one holy Catholic and apostolic church, everybody's saying the creed, get the binder out from the storage slot probably below, open up the binder to the petitions as you're saying the creed, and then you're ready to go when the priest says, let us now pray together our petitions. And you just start. For missionaries and caregivers who serve abroad at home, we pray to the Lord, and so on and so forth. Seamless, smooth, and it goes pretty smoothly. Now, say that there is no creed, because you don't say the creed at weekday masses. Or say that the creed is altered and there's something different, like it's an Easter mass and we're renewing our baptismal promises. Don't worry about that timing, okay? So if there's no creed or there's a different form of the creed, wait as we used to do where the priest is going to introduce. Once he starts introducing, start making your way up to the ambo, okay? And just do the best that you can with being punctual and getting that book open and then opening it up. Then you read the petitions word for word. There are most, just about every time that there's a week end mass, there's a set of petitions at the end with the death petitions, one for five o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11.30. Just make sure that you're reading the right one for the right mass. Sometimes there's a couple of peti- a couple weekends where like there's RCIA folks at the 10 a.m. mass. So it says read this, this set at 10 a.m., read these three at all the other masses. So just be paying attention to the petition sheet and what it's telling you to read. If it has none of those notes, assume that you're reading everything. Okay, which could happen for Holy Days of Obligation, for example, like um, uh, All Saints Day. There's no, there's no different Masses. It's just the 6 o'clock evening Mass that's going to use that binder. So you just read it straight down, for example. Once you're done with the petitions, contrary to what you've been doing before, you stay at the ambo. Okay? Now, you can turn to the priest, or you can stay here like this and not move. But the priest has a prayer to finish the lifting up of the petition. So let him finish the prayer, say amen, then make your way out of, off the ambo. Don't, don't, don't interrupt the priest and distract from what he's doing there. Any questions about the petitions? So that's a little bit of a change with the timing of it, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward there. Good. Moving forward. Say that you're responsible for the announcements. Your cue is during meditation. So after communion happens and the altar is being cleared, what happens for meditation in particular is the priest is going to sit down in the presider's chair. If it's a weekend mass and there's ushers, they will turn the lights down most at most of those masses. Okay, so that's a cue. That's a helpful cue. Altar servers will be going up to take any extra items off of the altar and clear it. Or the priest may have already cleared the altar. I didn't put this in here, but maybe there's some stuff that he just left because he wants to get mass over with. But he sits down in the presider's chair, and that's, that's your main cue, okay? So when he sits down, and say that the altar needs to be cleared by altar servers. Once the last t- thing is taken off of the altar, make your way up to the ambo. If there's nothing there, if there's no movement there, and the priest has sat down, wait for a few seconds, like three or five, and then walk up to the ambo. Now, if the priest sits down and tells you, come on up immediately, listen to the priest, obviously, okay? But if we can, we try to wait a few seconds, just a few extra seconds for people to change their posture and finish up their prayers. So you wanna try to be cognizant of that aspect of it. When you make your way up here, Make sure that the binder is open to the announcements page. It's probably still there because of the petition, so you just have to turn a page over. Then you read the announcements, as you have been throughout the Mass. And then, once you're done with the announcements, you make your way uh, back to your pew. 
and the priest will stand up and let us pray, and you'll probably be standing at this point. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Do, I didn't do that because uh, I, I was. Uh, but yeah, you can leave the binder up here because nobody's nobody's going to need to use anything over here, so this will be fine. Now, say that there's no announcements, and this is why it's important to ch double check to see if there are before the mass starts. You don't have to do anything here. You can just sit down and meditate and still be the normal parishioner, right? So make sure that you, there's no announcements, or make sure that there are announcements to read so that you're not going up and like, oh, there's no announcements today, and so on and so forth, unless you really want to prank the priest. So, yeah, they, they love that kind of, they love that kind of humor. <laughs> Are there any questions about any of the things that we that you're doing for mass? Yeah. I um, just a comment. I know we didn't talk about gospel acclamations for masses that don't have music. And I just I noticed I do the gospel acclamation all the time when I read on Tuesdays, and I know each priest handles it differently. Yes. Father Raw. Well, I, I don't. Or do you want to? Well, yeah. That. Sometimes the priest may deviate from this packet, and so this packet is just kind of a general guideline of what we're trying to do. But if a priest wants to do something differently, the priest wins. So follow the priest, and if he wants you to read the gospel acclamation, or he has a certain timing of it, he wants to say the Alleluia before you do it. For example, you're staying up at the ambo after the second reading. For example, just you double check with the priest about how he wants to do that stuff, especially if you have a question about the protocol there. Okay, and if it deviates from this, he wins. So, I will, I will just comment that. So, they, so, Father Bonke, if you ever have a master in my experience, he doesn't want me to read it at all because he only thinks that the gospel application should be sung. Yep. So, on a no music, that you don't even say anything at all. Father Rob, you have to take your cue to say Alleluia or Glory to I mean, Lord to Glory to God. Yep. Right, so, yeah, diff all three priests have something different with the daily mass, and so... Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. The visiting priest is like, what do we say here now? So, yeah, just pay attention to some of that stuff that might happen, especially with the gospel acclamation on a not-music mass, right, when you're responsible for that. Any other questions about mass in general there? You don't have to. If you want to be nice, um, you can, and that's perfectly fine. But I would leave that responsibility into the lectors for the next Mass, right? Because they, they're the ones that have to get it in order and ready to go and practice it. So if you just leave the stuff on the ambo, it'll be fine. Um, and it just makes things easier for, for them so that they're not like, oh, where do they move that to? So, yeah, you can do that. But if you want, you can, you can close books, you can close binders, or you can turn it back to the first page and things of that nature. So it's up to you. In the past, at least, what I've seen is after announcements, I just waited there until after the priest said, let us pray. And then when they're getting ready to proceed, proceed out, that's when I can go off. Because it seems distracting to me is if, if I'm done with announcements and the priest is standing up saying, let us pray, and I'm walking back. That's why I just stood there. Yeah, I would... I just walk back immediately when you're done because one of the things that will help to the priest get going on the let us pray is that you're walking back and it sends them a signal that you're done. Sometimes priests don't know how many announcements there are and they don't know what the timing of it is. They're not looking at this beforehand too much. Um, and so you, that would be your signal. And what he's saying is let us pray, but everybody's got to stand up. So by that point, without bowing, you're probably going to make it back to your pew in time. So the, 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 timing should, the timing should work well with that. And if, when he starts his actual prayer, you won't be interrupting anything. So, And if you can't do it, and if you're on the slower side, you can certainly wave up here, that's fine. Or you can turn, and that could be enough of a signal too. So, Any other questions? Very good. So this last bit of it is just some tips 
for reading, uh, especially for anybody that would be newer on the lecture side. Many of you have done this before, so this won't be too veering off of what you already probably know. But, if, but sometimes we get nervous, right? So sometimes if you're, you know, it's a bigger mass or you're just, there's a lot of people here, right? So you, you get nervous. I get nervous when I play music back there for every mass. So that, that, doesn't, that doesn't stop me from getting nervous no matter how many masses I've played. What I, what I advise is that try to take deep breaths, right? Your heart rate is moving 10,000 miles a minute. So you wanna try to take deep breaths and, and not let it go overboard, right? If you let that go overboard, it can get out of control. Deep breaths. The second point is very much on the same line of that. Read slower than usual. When you're moving fast and you're nervous, you read faster. So this is me reading as if I was really nervous and not taking the time to slow myself down a reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Now, I'm thinking, that's perfect. I'm reading at a perfect pace and I'm getting the words right and I'm in focus. But when you read back, when you look back on a recording of yourself doing it like that, that's really fast. That's, so generally, it's on the slower side. Now, there is a too slow. A reading from the book of Genesis, that's too slow, okay? But the, somewhere in the middle, and that's gonna, be, that's gonna be great, okay? You wanna read everything that you're reading word for word. Now, if you have a question about something, that's why you're doing the due diligence before mass so that you can make the edits that necessary. But don't try to do that once the mass, try to do the best that you can not to ad lib too much once the mass begins, okay? Just read things word for word and make it clean, efficient, and so on and so forth. This next point is a really big one. Um, you want to read as if the book is closed and you're not having to look at a book and they're your own words, okay? And this goes into the whole main point of why you have a lecture ministry in the first place. This is the living word of God, okay? This isn't some, it can be tempting to think that this, was written, this stuff was written 2,000, 3,000 years ago, right? And so you're just kind of telling people what they thought 2,000, 3,000 years ago in a very documentary form sort of a way. But this word of God pertains to us today. This is something that still means something to us. And we have the readings in those hymnals, right, where people can read along. But the church requires that these are read and orated out to people so that they're listening. Because you all, and you all, and anybody that's lecturing, you're the life in the word of God. You bring that life to the word of God. So when you're reading, and maybe you're, those words aren't there, you're doing a couple of things differently. You're probably gonna turn your head up and read like this and address everybody in the room, right? A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. At the ends of phrases, I'm looking up at you. I'm making eye contact with the crowd. And if, I, if there were people sitting over there or in the back corner, I would turn my head up and kind of do a pan back and forth. I'm also not changing too much about how I read because it's just, it's just words and it's ideas being communicated. Imagine if they were your own ideas and you're talking to 400 people about what you want to tell them, you know, as if it's your own story to tell. If it's your own, if it's the second reading from Paul, and this is why genre is important, it's something of education, right? So you're teaching somebody about something or you're, you're writing a letter for, of fraternity maybe because he greets people that way. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? I'm not doing this. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? That's not authentic to who I am. I'm faking that, okay? You wanna to try to, it's like you're talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, but you're talking to somebody, you're talking to a lot of people, right? It, be who you are. You know, be, be that person that we can listen to like, well, we're having a conversation with you, except I'm being quiet and I'm listening to what you have to say, kind of a deal. So that's what that point is about, and it's a really important one. There is a too much, okay? There's some things that you can do, and this is where we get into the point of it can be too distracting when you try to be authentic and be too lively, right? So some things to think about on the back page. You don't want to do any distracting movements with your arms or hands. I'm a guy that loves to talk like this. I love to make gestures. I love to be Italian. I love to do all that stuff, pointing and making gestures to help communicate. But when I'm up here reading, I try to grab the ambo 
because that helps me not move my arms. Let the words do the talking, okay? Let your eyes do the talking. Don't, don't, don't use your arms or hands, that's too much, okay? If possible, try not to lift the book up from the ambo for your eyesight, okay? Do the best you can with that. There's some people that have to do this, and I've seen a priest do this, okay? So it happens, okay? Sometimes your eyes are just bad. But try not to do too much, don't do this, okay? Right, just as much as, need, as much as need be, but try to keep it on the ambo if you can and read from there. Okay. I would rather, however, have to tell you that you're doing too much and have to tell you to scale it back than try to make it more lively for you. So do the best you can to be who you are when you're reading these things. So that way people are more interested in what you have to hear instead of being boring. And, well, I don't, I'm going to tune out here and just kind of sit back. Because that's also distracting, right? That's not actively participating either. So we want to, we want to, we want to invite people to engage in the readings of the, that day. Another thing, this is with mic placement. Notice how the mic is placed right here. And then, of course, I have this other mic here. It's a happy balance. If you stand too close like this, those kind of consonants explode and don't sound very good too far away, and you're not getting picked up. This is an area mic. So that you can, there's a lot of ways where it's gonna pick up sound, okay? So about here is pretty good, where my P's are still heard, my F's are still good, but I'm not blowing too much air that makes it explosive, okay? It will almost always be turned on but if it's not, check with the priest, or if you know how that sound system works, there's a sound system in the sacristy, you just hit the on button, so maybe it's just not on. Or you have to unmute it, but when in doubt, just check with the priest and he'll take care of the sound for it. It should be, it should be working fine and in good order, the mic should be fine. This is, the next point is kind of related to it. You wanna speak with enough volume that the people in the church, back of church can hear you. Um, and for us, the farthest distance is that back corner over there in the musician area, so say that there's anybody over there. If it's a daily mass, you don't have to raise your voice like I'm talking to you over there, over there a little bit. You don't have to do too much because you have a microphone, and this is a pretty acoustic, live acoustic space. We've got bricks, we've got hard floor. That reflects sound, whereas carpet and sound panels deflect it, but we have a lot more reflection in this space, so this sound's gonna carry. Even if I stood over here, and I talked with enough volume, that person over there is still going to hear at least enough of it. But now say that I talk like this. That's too, that's too quiet, right? So have a happy balance in that too, right? And then the last point, just speaking with clear pronunciation and good diction, it's easy for us to oftentimes not pronounce like D's and T's and things of that nature. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. But if you can, slow it a little bit down and go, God put Abraham to the test. It just helps people that are maybe a little hard of hearing, but aren't using the assistive ear devices back there, certainly pick up what you're saying. Any questions about those tips? Any comments? Anything that you, anybody that has, has to add? So thanks everybody for being here today and just going over those details and so on and so forth. Um, is there anybody new? I don't think I've seen, I'm seeing any new faces here. Is there anybody new here today? Very good. We're done. Thanks, thanks for being here. You can keep those packets and uh, the changes will start next weekend, not this weekend.